That's why he became the meanest dude. He said, for the rest of my life, I will make Mexicans pay. Oh, I got it right away because yeah. they did a premiere and they cut it up in a way. And I'm like, I'm going to get the smoke. Yeah. Who the most underrated man on earth is today. Humans were still killing humans in 2024. Okay. And a lot of that was behind religion and oil. The most underrated way to make money. That's literally so obvious that when you're going to tell people, they're going to be like, why didn't I think? There's a higher probability of making a million dollars with this common business idea i often say if you hear me say i'm an alpha kick me in the nuts how many wives you have in your ideal future life or currently or currently i'm not sure humans deserve to be here because we have so many insane flaws Justin, thanks for being on the Here in My Garage, Ty Lopez Show. I am extremely excited to be here. I've seen this garage many times. You have. So I kind of find it to be a bit surreal, Ty. That's awesome. Yeah, it's well, great I'm to be here. I'm glad you're man. here. So we live in a crazy world, and I wanted to get your take on something I was thinking before we launched the show, which is what's the craziest thing, and, you, and take a second to think about this, that everybody thinks is normal. Even people who think they think out of the box, it's the craziest thing in the world that's just accepted by society. But like our grandkids are going to be like, what? You believe that? Just like in the 18, 17, 1800s, if you weren't feeling good, the doctors would open up a vein and let blood drip out. And they're like, oh, that'll make you feel better. Now we're like, what? So what do you think a what thing is? 200 years from now? Yeah, our grandkids, even 50 years from now. Humans were still killing humans in 2024. Okay. And a lot of that was behind religion and oil. You know, natural resources, religion, the homeland. Like, humans are still killing humans. Yeah. And, and that's nothing against any religion or, you know, anybody that thinks that we still need to fight wars for, you know, the petrodollar or whatever. Right. I just think it's absolutely wild that we're not spending more energy figuring out why the fuck we're flying through space on a rock. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Our world's talent is going to... YouTube and TikTok, right? For, um, you know, basically consumerism because they just want to start their own business. When collectively as society, we still kill each other as humans, right? And we're not trying to figure out, you know, really what's going on here, in, on on a planet in a place that is very clearly, you know, in the middle of space, and and yeah. we're still killing each other. I, I think in two hundred years they're gonna they're gonna say that about us now. They're like. Those idiots were still killing each other. Yeah, we were barbarians. Yeah. Like we're in the Stone Age, if you will. Yeah. Even if even if you look at the dollar itself. Right. You know, in, in the way that the whole thing is set up and we send money to Ukraine, but then politicians have stock in Lockheed Martin. It's happened right in front of our eyes. Right. They're gonna talk about us in the same way. Yeah. As they talked about kings and queens and and, and civilizations two hundred years ago. We're still quite brutal in our nature is yeah. as intelligent as we supposedly are. Now I think that is something that they'll look back at us and not only laugh, but kind of be a little ashamed of. Yeah. I was on a, I was going to the gym when my friend has a PhD in AI. And he said, I said, do you think AI will wipe out humans? He said, maybe because I'm not sure humans deserve to be here because we have so many insane flaws. We're like actually a flawed machine. We kill people. It's like, what do you believe about God? Okay, it's not exactly what I believe. I'm going to shoot you. Right. Even though I can't even prove mine and you can't right. prove yours, I feel like mine's better than yours. Therefore, I feel like you should die. It's a pretty, it is a weird thing. And it's also a weird thought to think too, that their feeling based off of whatever God they choose yes. is normally going to be geographically based off where they yes. were born. Exactly. And so for me, that's just not a good enough answer. Yeah. And I think that's the craziest thing about the world we live in now is that. Yeah, that's a good point. My, I, uh, one of my mentors, Dr. David Buss, he says, also remember Ty, religiosity and political affiliation soon You'll meet somebody on a Tinder date or you'll take a cotton swab, you'll swipe their mouth and you'll be able to be like, this person, 80% likely to be very religious, 30% likely to be Democrat, 70% likely to be Republican. It's actually in our genes. And so we're fighting over also differences in our unconscious genes. And we think we're smart, like our politics are good. Like I just watched the French election. 
So now France has basically gone pretty nationalist. The leader's like, we ain't letting Islam into France. That's kind of her take right now. But once again, it, does she have free will? Or is this a genetic propensity that she has? And these become these crazy ethical questions. But that, that's for another podcast. Let me, let me keep this moving because we can sit here for eight hours <laughs> on this go, conversation. Yeah, we're about to go into cell memory. We, we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we can be all right. Let's go super practical. You made, you're in the one-tenth of one percentile of wealth. Because in America, people don't realize if you make over 400 grand only in a year on your tax return, you're in the 1% of America. And America is one of the wealthiest countries in the world. So if you're in the 1% of America and you did it early, like if you could go back and now you're 12, right? What's the first, and, and you go in a time machine, but it has, it's a weird time machine. You only pop in for 30 seconds and then it zip, zips you back to right here in my garage. So you got 30 seconds to, but, but your young 12 year old self is going to be like, that was the Justin from adulthood. Right. What do you say in that crazy narrow window? Am I talking to myself when I'm 12 in the nineties? Exactly. Yep. No, no, let's no. I like that. You're 12 now. It's the 2024, 2025. Right. So what do you say to yourself? And specifically it's about money. Go all in on learning AI. Okay. And probably personal branding, yes. which is a point that you made yesterday. Yeah. I just happen to agree and believe that that's dead on. Yeah. I think in 2024, yeah. when there is all this opportunity, despite what I just said, yeah. I understand why people want to build brands. Yes. So for that reason, I can't fault them for it. I yeah. do think as a whole, it's crazy we're killing each other, not figuring out the whole space thing or putting more energy into yeah. that. However... Biggest return on investment in 2024, if I can talk to my 12-year-old self, I'd yeah. be like, don't worry about what anybody thinks. Don't worry about any judgment. You live in the deep south. Yeah. Understand that people are going to judge you for this. Understand that people are going to want you to be more humble. It's not going to work. Those people aren't happy. Go build a brand. Show your heart to the world. And the people that love you will come. And for that, it will be worth every bit. That's what I would tell myself, without a doubt. That's good. So you brought up something. I actually went to high school. I was born in California, but at 13, my stepdad worked for the post office, got transferred to Raleigh, North Carolina. So I lived, graduated high school, living in the South. You talk about the judgment. What do you, what did you do and still do now to overcome the judgment of the world? Because you're an outspoken person. Outspoken people for the last 10,000 years are the immediate object of the tribe's judgment. How do you deal with it? LeBron James says he doesn't read any media about himself. He doesn't even try to be, he's like, I don't even try to be tough. I just don't read it. What right. do you do? I understand that. That makes a lot of sense. Um, for the longest time, it held me back. Okay. It did. There, were, there was a point where I could have started social media maybe a year earlier, but I still wasn't over the fact. What, what I always tell people is you have to get to a place where you don't care about what the people on your Facebook are going to say about you yeah. in exchange for letting the world love you for who you are. Yeah. yeah. And so like when you think of Facebook, particularly you think yeah. more friends and family. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Instagram is more like the world or, or YouTube is the world. Tw Twitter is the world. Yeah. So you have to be okay. Accepting those people saying, who the hell does he think he is? Yeah. And then get your message out in a way that you're doing so much content that that flood of negativity that yeah. could come at you gets either so big or there's so much that you can't read the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first year I would read the comments a lot. Yeah. And now as time has gone by, I've come to understand that just based off of the certain demographic of people following a certain platform that I go on, yeah. I'm either going to get love or hate regardless of what I say. Yeah, yeah, you for know? sure. So for example, I did Daily Wire the other day. Yeah. And... <laughs> Ben Shapiro. Yeah, guy. yeah. And so Knowles. I did Michael Knowles. Yeah. Cool guy. Like him a lot. Their editing team put the, the title of the video, Alpha Mentor. And I'm like, okay, here comes the smoke. Right. You know? Did you it, get it right away? Oh, I oh. got it right away. Because yeah. they did a premiere and they cut it up in a way. And I'm like, I'm going to get the smoke. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. With those people and those comments that will talk like that about me, they don't know. If I saw them, I, dude, I'd hug their neck. Yeah. I have nothing against them. 
But depending on the platform you go on, yeah, the response that you're going to get, they already know who you are. Some of them might already have an opinion of you. Yeah. And then they put alpha mentor on there, yeah. which is a word I despise, the yeah. word alpha. You'll yeah. never hear me say yeah. I'm an alpha. I often say, if you hear me say I'm an alpha, kick me in the nuts. Yeah. You know, like I don't like it. But of course, of course, Has that's anybody done it yet. Well, Any no, kicks yet? no, because Maybe I've not said it. Alpha for I've it. not said it. So I've not said it. And I won't say it. You know, like I understand why people use the word as a placeholder. But I, I, I tweeted recently. Like, if you say you're alpha, that's gay. Right. It's completely it's completely gay. But <laughs> if you say you're alpha, you're probably not. Alpha. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely not. So, so if you this need is to like do, if you say I had a guy work for me who's seven foot two bodyguard at a club. I had. Yeah. He, on his profile, he didn't need to be like, yo, I'm tall. Anybody walked in that room, he actually wore a shirt that said, I'm 7'2", don't ask. Because all day, his life experience was like, how tall are you? How yeah. tall are you? So when you're really tall, you don't talk about it. When you're really rich, you don't have to talk about it. You know right. what I mean? Although once in a while, you got to put people in their place. I've learned, be humble 98% of the time. But sometimes you got to slap around a motherfucker. That doesn't know who you are. I've done that. There was a guy who uh, I helped become big. I won't say who he is. And, uh, I mean, I, I took him from $2 million to $40 million like this. And he got cocky. And I called him one time. and I was like, motherfucker, I made you. I could destroy you, too. And to his credit, he fucking piped down and was cool from then on. Really? But, yeah, I learned I learned that, you know, I have a farm still in the South. And one thing I learned about the farm is the big boss bull or the, the stud horse, you know, can be nice once in a while, but if something pisses off too much, smacks it around a little bit, throws it, and then it doesn't happen again for a year because people do have short memories. But so when you get all this, you post the alpha, it says alpha and you get this hate. Are you at the point now where you just like read a few and then just move on? Pretty much. Yeah, that's what I do. That's Pretty the much. best strategy. Because you know what also happens is that if if there's a trickle of hate, yeah. group think starts to happen. Yes. So it multiplies regardless. And it doesn't change anything about my life. Yeah. I always say that my real life is so good. How could I ever be upset about something that an avatar said to me online? Right. Like I could get a hundred percent hate. Yeah. If I feel good about what I said, yes. especially if there's negative comments, I'll watch it again. If yeah. I see negative comments, I'll watch it again. What I'm looking for when I watch it back is, did I say anything that I disagree with? Right. Did I say anything that or did I... did they edit it in a way that makes it right. sound different? Or, or is there any validity in anything that I said yes. that would have caused that response? Yeah. Because I don't want to be arrogant in the sense that I'm not willing to hear negative feedback. Exactly. When I first started, we had a group chat called the list of hate. Okay. And I used the <laughs> list of hate, which was all the negative comments. Yep. To kind of bounce back. Right. Off of me to make sure that I was actually staying in line yeah. with how I felt. Yeah, yeah. And I thought it was a very healthy thing to do. Now we eventually got so big that it didn't make sense to do it anymore. Yeah. Like I knew I was either going to get it or I wasn't a lot of times based off of whatever channel I'm going on yeah. and, and what the subject is. And so where do you get the most hate? What channel do you think is the worst? I mean, daily wire is probably, probably getting me pretty good right <laughs> but now. But I'm saying which like Insta, TikTok, where do you notice any trends? YouTube. It would have to be YouTube because just because of interviews. Yeah. Yeah. But man, again, do you get more hate on the longer stuff or the clips? Probably clips. Yeah, because clips are more viewed. Yeah, clip, clips and clips are cut. edited to be like, let's yeah. get let's get a rise out. Let's trigger the man. Audience. I'll tell you, my first year because I've only been doing this two and a half years. My YouTube guys, they yeah. always want to have these controversial type yeah. thumbnails and all these other things, and I'm constantly no. No, yeah. no, even they're cutting it up to make me controversial. Yeah. And I'm just like, guys, why? Yeah. And I had this whole conversation with my YouTube guy once. He said, but this is what gets us followers. And I said, but it's, it's degenerate sounding. It's ridiculous. And right. I don't want that kind of follower. Yeah. If I need to act like this to get followers, yes. then I have the wrong people following me. Yes. Yeah, better grow a little slower in a way you want to grow. I remember when I launched here in my garage, was right there, different Lambo books right there this is 10 years ago okay no hate for and and this video blew up like fucking spike on youtube it was like i remember yeah i mean everybody saw it in america 
no hate for about six weeks. I remember wait. I never use Reddit. My brother uses one of my, I have six brothers. One of my brothers used Reddit. He sent me something. It was like, unleash the hounds coming at me. That was the first time I'd been hit with hate before. But if, if the whole world, like I became like the most Googled person in the world for a month. It's crazy. That's where I was like, thank God I had read about LeBron James. I was like, do not read all this shit or you'll go nuts. So I think that what you have to do is what you said, read a little bit because sometimes your haters are telling the truth. Right. So you, you need a you little lesson. Look for that. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be checked a little yeah. bit, but most of them are wrong. So you're looking for the little gold where somebody right. is like, ah, oh, Ty, da, da, da. So over time I've developed my brand. It was more flashy at the beginning, which you kind of have to do though at the beginning. Right? Then you can that, moderate very down much a paradox. over time. Yes. I, I struggle with that a lot as well because Coming from the South, yeah. it's this very, you're, you're grown up to be humble. Yes. And I've said this before and it upsets people. And I don't even like that it's true, but humble does not pay. Exactly. And, and it's, this, it's this odd paradox between trying to show people your heart. Right. And flexing enough yep. where they know that you're also qualified. Yes. And uh, it's not the easiest balance. It's no. not the easiest thing to balance, especially internally. Because I, you know, I... I don't really care about money that much. Yeah. Remember yesterday you were talking about the four M's? Yeah. I can tell you number one, mine's freedom without a doubt. Freedom, yeah. My ability to be free in my life and have people in my life that I can take care of and be proud to call a part of my family and be really close to them and bond with them and be able to go wherever I want, whenever I want, live the life I want, do the projects I want, buy the properties I want, do the businesses I want, way more important to me than flexing my Lamborghini on yeah. Instagram. Do I have to do it? In some ways, yeah, I think so. Yeah. But I don't think that's my heart as much as it is me putting two little kids in it and letting them take a photo in it. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's I get more joy. In fact, yeah. there, there's a clip of me that went viral. I did that. That's why I bring it up. It was probably the happiest moment I've ever had with that car. Huh. There was two little boys. They saw the car. I pulled up uh, to SLX. Okay. Or SLS in Miami. Yeah, yeah. Right SLS. there on the main strip. Yeah. And two little boys were right there, and I got out. I put one in the driver's seat, and I picked the little brother up and put him in the other one so the parents could take photos. Yeah. Probably the best moment I've ever had in the car. Yeah. But I have to use the car for marketing for sure. aside from that. And, and you know the way I look at that is this, is that if there's a guy, they'll say it's a construction course I'm going to do. Yeah. He rents a Lambo. Right. Takes a photo in front of the Lambo, and I don't. But I'm the one that built the real company. I'm the one that right. has the better product. And who am I really screwing over? Exactly. Because you're not if, getting your message. Up. If he's flexing to the guy, then the kid is going to buy his product instead of mine. Yeah. And so it's this weird balance of, you know, showing that you were successful, but then not feeling as if all you care about is money. Yeah. Because it, it couldn't be more untrue for me. I don't. Money doesn't let, drive let me, me at do all. the four M's with you. Let's, let's run do through. It. Let's run. Let's do it. You could do it. I have twelve types.com where I build the four motivations quiz, but I can do it verbally. So if you had a choice, the four M's are material, money, materialistic things. Number two, mating romance. Number three, movement freedom. Number four, mastery status. So let's let's I if I could wire you ten billion dollars, okay. Scenario one, but you got to be celibate, no love, no kids, no romance, nothing for 10 years. Okay. That's it. You get 10 billion cash after tax. Option B, you get a hundred grand a year for the next 10 years, but you have whatever you consider the best romantic life, love, sex, family, kids, which one are you choosing? Got to take B. Okay. So you can take mating slash romance. All right, so now let's compare those two. Let's actually compare the billion dollar one. So okay. you got 10 billion cash, but this time you have no freedom. You pick one home, you can't go more than two miles from that home in the next decade. You got a nine to five schedule. Even though you got 10 million in the bank, you got a nine to five schedule. You get three weeks vacation. 10 billion. You got 10 billion in cash but you can't go more than two miles of your house for the next 10 years. Right. And you got to show up at the office nine to five, regular schedule, you get three weeks vacation a year. And this one you make a, mi and then this one you have ultimate freedom, but you only make a million bucks a year, but you could travel, do whatever you want on your time. 10 million, no freedom to travel or set your schedule, one million a year. 
full travel, full schedule. Which one are you taking? Can I start businesses with the one million in the travel? No, you can never make. Yeah, but you can never make more than one million. Okay, if you cool. make any more than a million, it gets given away to a charity. Okay. Maximum cool. wealth building is a million bucks a year. Which one are you taking? I'll take the million bucks. Okay, so you want the freedom. All right, last one. We take 10 billion in cash, but you're the most unknown person to ever be wealthy. When I say unknown, if anybody finds out you have money or you're qualified or you're squil- a So no Gatsby shit. Nope, you gotta send me the money back. Okay. So you get 10 bill, but if anybody besides immediate family and two friends, you get two friends, you walk into a club, you walk into a conference, you uh, nobody's ever heard of you. You're in the back of the line. We went, we went to a comedy club last night, Laugh Factory. You're in a regular line. You got nothing that can show. You can have wealth. You can be buying assets with your 10 billion here, but you can have no status. Or you make a million bucks a year and you're basically the most respected man on earth. Men want to be you. Women want to be with you. You're, you are famous, but in a good way, not Kardashian fame. I'm talking about Chuck Norris fame. I always say yeah, yeah. best brand on earth is Chuck Norris. Everybody loves Chuck Lo- Chuck Norris, but you're like the Chuck Norris of the world. Bruce Lee. Right. Which one do you actually Mike Tyson's become that guy. He got his status back. He's not as rich as he used to be, but people like Tyson. They respect him. They want it. So are you the respected 1 million a year? No more for 10 years. Or are you the 10 billion? You do what you want, but it's in silent silence. I would definitely take the one million again. Yeah, one million. Yeah, absolutely. How much is your life going to change? Not much. Right. I always have that argument. People talk about being a billionaire all the time. I don't think people understand how much a billion dollars is, first of all. They throw that around. I remember being a kid and people would throw when they started throwing around millionaire. Yeah. And and people didn't really understand what that meant at that time. And I think people do that for billionaire now. And, um, I just go back to what would change about my life. Yeah. Not a whole lot. Yes. You know, essentially I have that second one. Like my life is pretty much like you that already now. have that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's absolutely incredible. I'm, I mean, so you're a status mastery guy, by the way, between those three last ones, if you could only have love, you could only have freedom. You could only have status. Which one do you like the most? I think you got to take love, man. Romantic love. Okay. Romantic love. I would say just love in general. But I'm talking about this is, mating one of my mentors dr bus says to the end of the day everything's sex and mating we're driven by primitive instincts we i think. agree i say so are, you, are you a sex mating guy or are you famous but celibate for a decade oh, adrian now, now you're adrian taking, are popped you, up yeah now, now i'm going take, to the sub we know materialism is your lowest of yeah. the four m's of motivation yeah but it sounds like we may have a close tie so i'm trying to get what's the big dog is it Hold on. So let's back up now. So you telling me if I make a million dollars and I have the respect, I can't actually In have this hypothetical, romance? we're talking, you can make a hundred grand a year, be moderately well-known, moderate free freedom, but you got the best situation with women, kids, love, everything's like psh. on the 10 billion. No, the 10 billion's out. I know right, you don't cool. care All about right, the cool. 10 billion. Now we're on, we're trying to, I'm trying to, I know this, I agree with you. You're like me. Material is our lowest thing. Right. You want greatest love life, but no freedom, no status. You want great freedom, but no love, no status. Or you want status, but no love, no freedom. This one's hard. I'm very close. I don't want to taint what you I said. Ha- I have an opinion on this. Okay. I believe that every man for all of time has gotten out of bed to invent, build, and maintain society in pursuit of women. Okay. I do think that is the driving factor of man and society. Yes. For that reason, I think I would have to pick the romance. Pick romance mating. What is the guy with the status and the money going to do? Right. More than likely, he's going to have loads of women or a, a wife that he loves and, and or a family that he loves. Yeah. So I'll take the family and the romance all day. JFK, when he died... You know, he was assassinated. His wife went and got remarried to a Greek billionaire. His name was Anna Onassis. He was a freight magnet, cargo ships. And he said, famous quote from this Greek old billionaire, he said, all the money in the world wouldn't matter if there was no women. 
That's a thousand percent. That's what true. he said. And you know what I always say about that? If it wasn't for women, we'd all live on a mattress on the floor, right? With video games in Thailand or something. That's somewhere. what dudes do. Yeah. You ever meet a bachelor dude that's yeah. not doing well with women? He got one fork, yep. one, one cup, one bowl, one plate, a couch that should be burned and incinerated because it's so dirty, right? And a fucking monitor to play video games on the floor. Yeah, and that is my argument. <laughs> that is my argument is that you can have all those things, but then you would you'd be tortured by the fact that you couldn't use them at all. Yes, and a lot of people don't like to face that. They they I guess virtue sequel signal through you know oh I would never yeah, and I think a lot of those people don't understand that they've never experienced having that opportunity in the first place. Right, and I don't mean to be mean or rude to them, but I don't think they have any idea of what they would do if let's say their Instagram box was full of Instagram models that was trying to see them while they were in right. Los Angeles. Right. They have no idea. So they virtue seekle and go the other way. Oh, I would never. Oh no, my friend. Yes. You can't. Yes. And there's a big difference. Yes. So take your Tim Tebow and virtue virtue seeking somewhere else, my yeah. friend. By the way, I love Tim Tebow, nothing against him, but that is right. the type, that avatar person that that says that they would never do certain things. I just argue that they have not even had the opportunity so who are they to say that they wouldn't i read the autobiography of geronimo who's like the greatest apache warrior you know killed like 300 people in hand-to-hand -hand combat with him he had nine wives he said but over his life first wife he loved the most he had two kids and he came back from a hunting trip and mexican army people had slaughtered his whole family wow that's why he became the meanest dude he said for the rest of my life i will make Mexicans pay and he became this ruthless warrior but over time he had nine wives it's interesting I live with the Amish for two and a half years who are very Christian in the traditional sense so they only have one wife but the average Amish guy um, ends up with more than one wife because oftentimes let's say the wife dies so I have an Amish guy who works on my farm he's like 70 he's had three wives but of course not all at the same time he had one and she died from something too and he's on his third wife and it's, it's very interesting that in general people even if they're super christian virgin they oftentimes same with women end up with more than one partner in life because people you don't die at the same time as somebody else right you know so yeah. you would have eight how many kids in an ideal world i'd really like to get to 10 boys 10 boys so yeah. on average you'd have yeah. 10 girls then yeah well yeah i'd take that Unless you're going to use, are you going to do genetic tests to try to select yeah, I would, for yeah, boys? I would, yeah, I would definitely do the <laughs> in vitro to win boys. Okay, I'm yeah. going to give you a counter argument to that, okay? I know why dudes saying that. It's cool to have, I, I have kids, right? So it's like, but women actually are more likely to pass on your bloodline. So I see a lot of dudes be like, I want my bloodline. You're better off to have 10 daughters. Is it boys yeah, because your, you want to be able to play football That's your bloodline, not your them? name. That's not your name. Yeah, though. but in the modern world, I'm going to tell my daughters, when you get married, you tell that dude, they keep your name. Fuck that. I'm going to reverse you know, it. It's funny you said that. I'm, I'm setting up all my trust and stuff for my daughters. Yeah, put and, in there. And inside it, I'm writing prenups yes. for them to get the trust money. Yep. That way, when I'm dead and gone and their husbands come through, they realize that, hey, I'm still dad, and you can't right. do shit about it. <laughs> You're going to rule from the grave. Yeah, yeah, I run this shit. Yes, it's going to be ruling from That's the grave. Right. Don't fucking forget who the big boss is. <laughs> I will yeah. The father-in-law will haunt you for yeah. centuries. You get nothing. Yeah, well, they, hey, the Rockef they don't. Rockefellers still ruling from the grave. Vanderbilts are still ruling from the grave. Anderson Cooper is a Vanderbilt, the big media guy. Yeah. That family... Cornelius Vanderbilt, the first American billionaire. Dude's ruling from the grave. His son, his great great grandson. But I just think, I think there was a man in history named Mubarak the Bloodthirsty about 1,000 years ago in modern day Morocco. He had 900 sons. And back then, you didn't measure your, you did not count your daughters because he sat on a throne of skulls. To intimidate when you walked into his courtyard you saw a man sitting on the skulls of people he had murdered and he sat there like that and his you had to call him Mumbarg the bloodthirsty you could throw that in your trust justin the bloodthirsty you know i, I don't if you know. mess with my daughters you i will yeah. sit on your skull <laughs> just 
an idea for you. Just throw know. that. In. Run that, that by the that, trust attorney. A, Can that, you put this in? That's a lot of hype, man. I, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a possibility. I don't know if I don't know if my ego is that big. <laughs> I just I just want to put them in their place and make sure they can't, you know, smooth operate their way to my daughter's money. There you go. So, so with your children, how much do they inherit when you die? What's your philosophy? Some billionaires are like, I'm giving them nothing. Some are like, I'll give them a mil or 10 mil. I think Bill Gates or Zuckerberg said they're going to give one to 10 mil. Some say zero. And some, the founder of Red Bull, looks like he gave his billions all to his kids. The richest man, Mbani, in India, his son walks around with $5 million watch. What's your take on it? Does it ruin your kids? That's a really interesting question. I think that you have to put hurdles in place for them to get the money in the first place. Right. Like you have this opportunity, but here's the hurdle that you have to yes. accomplish. And I also think that'll change very much over time. For example, if I had 10 sons, yeah, half of them are going to be dumb. Let's right. face it. Like statistically. <laughs> Depends who the mom is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, statistically, half of them are done. The, you know, and let's say three of them want to do it, but they just don't have it. Right. And then two of them are going to be really about it and probably the ones that I need to put in control of the situation. Yes. And so I think that's going to change over time as I get to know my kids better. Yeah. And as I have more children and get to know them. With their so will you give are, the smarter kids? Absolutely. Like I'm giving you more absolutely. of the empire. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well. And, and I will not be sorry for it either. Yeah. Because again, it goes back to, you know, what amount of money does it take to live a good life? Right. The difference between a billion. So the kids that are proven yeah. that are going to be competent, the ones I trust that can I keep the legacy going with them. Yeah. They're the ones that are going to work on the legacy and the family and making sure that I still rule from the grave. Yeah. Which that's not what it's about for me, but to taking care of people that we all love in our family. Yeah. And the other ones are going to probably get the amount that it takes to live a really good life and, and not have the same control as the ones that I trust to, you know, carry out the plan. Yeah. I respect those families like the Vanderbilts. Yeah. And, and the yeah, Rockefellers and things exactly. like that. Exactly. It's, it's a beautiful thing. People hate the Rockefellers in certain families, but at the end of the day, family lasts right corporations rise and fall it's interesting if you look in history it's only two organizations that last one of my mentors used to tell me he's like just study history it's right in front of your eyes corporations fail the largest corporation in american history was ge general electric it was on the original dow jones industrial average in the late 1800s it got delisted ge about 10 15 years ago so it lasted let's call it 140 years the longest run businesses in the modern world are, there's restaurants in France you can go to. You look on it, it says founded in the 1500s, family business passed from childhood. So you have family businesses are the longest run and armies. The Greek military been going strong for 2000 years. So basically the way, by the way, I run my companies is I tell people we're half military style and have family. I want the structure, discipline, and organization of the military, but I want the loyalty for people who have worked for me and proven loyal to me. I'm gonna be more loyal to you than a corporation, which right. would just fire. I have people working for me. There's a guy here you met. He's been working for, with me since 2002. So I got 22. And so for a guy like that, he kind of goes in the family category. Right. You know, so, but corporations don't last. So what the Rockefellers and Vanderbilts did is actually understand the natural cycles that you're more likely to stay intact when you got blood relationships. Right. That's why kings married their daughters off. And their son, they were like, we need to make peace with Poland. It's like, son, I got a job for you. You gonna go marry this Polish princess. Yep. Just Sorry. hope she's pretty. Yeah, sorry, if you, sorry you're taking that L because she's fat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if it was that. It's funny, though. The longest-running modern empire is the Habsburg Empire, which was Austria uh -huh. before Germany, you know? And they had this famously bad face. It's called the Habsburg chin. So dudes from England would be like, you got to take one for the team, brother. Yeah. You got to get one of Habsburg <laughs> family members. <laughs> oh, it's a horrible face. It's like the chin, like it's literally one of the worst faces. Too much inbreeding. Which, that's the one thing about family. You don't want your family breeding with themselves. No, you don't. So you got so you got 10 sons, which means you have 20 kids. You can be well, like, Bach, he well, had 20. Let me, let me clarify this as, as well. Let's say I had 10 sons and five daughters. Yeah. If those boys were not capable and I thought yeah. they were all dumb. Yeah. And I had a girl. Yeah. That I thought could do it. Yeah. I'd put her in front of them and they'd have to sit there and cry and they can kiss my ass. Yeah. I want the most competent child in the So chair. you're a meritocracy. That's yeah. good. 
yeah. thousand percent as it should be. Yeah. And I don't give a shit what gender they are. Yeah. I, I want the ones that are going to perform and take on the family name. Yeah. That's it. There was the greatest female leader was this Elizabeth, the Virgin Queen, Elizabeth, the first, by the way, there's a movie on her. I just saw, I don't know how this passed. It's like Gerard Butler's in it. Anyway, she was a, she was one of the most powerful women ever. She attacked Spain. And so, yeah, sometimes I think what you said is very accurate. When you have kids, because humans have sexual uh, reproduction, not all species do like ferns, earthworms, they reproduce asexual or with themselves like hermaphrodite humans you blend down so it's, it depends how good justin is at picking the women because iq is just as heritable as height you're a tall guy if you marry a three foot eleven midget you're not going to probably have tall kids it'll dilute right down yeah. if you though marry somebody you're a smart guy if you don't this is one of my things i think rich men mess up and this is why oftentimes rich families fall apart they just go for looks and they Huge forget mistake. women iq is heritable and women bring half to the table of the gen genes so you see these dudes that marry their mistresses that weren't the smart they were the prettiest but not the smartest right you gotta you you, you don't want to procreate with the dumb person if you have a no matter how charlie munger always says the most dangerous thing for a rich man is a pretty face because a pretty face will make you stop thinking like well she can't she can't, if I, I went on a date with a girl in, my, uh, in LA, first time I was in LA, Santa Monica promenade, sitting on a, I can still remember, I go, I gotta go to Miami next week. She was pretty too. Sometimes LA has these pretty, she goes, Miami, where's that? And I was like, uh oh, red flags. And I was like, Miami. She's like, oh yeah, I've heard of that before. It's like in Northern California. I was like, that goes in the mistress category. There ain't no mother there. I don't want to have a son that's like Miami. I've heard of that before. What is that? A planet? Was this a, <laughs> was this a white girl? Yeah, it was a blonde girl. And no yeah, way. Yeah. She wasn't like foreign or? Nope. Man, she might have just been trying to play like good girl. Types. Nope. I thought that too. You know what I'm saying? I gave her the benefit of the doubt for about two more minutes. And I was like, nope, that was her real answer. Wow. She won the smartest tool. And, and that's, by the way, one of the problems with society is when you reward and make stupid people famous, Agreed. you perpetuate that. So if on Instagram, other women and other men are seeing stupid people win because they go viral, then all of a sudden people don't develop out their brain. What do you do to stay smart? What's your, what's your routine? Is it conferences, seminars, meditation, books, masterminds, talking to smart, like what's your thing? I read books at least two to three hours a day. Okay. Nice. Every morning I wake up and I take a drive. I'm yeah. an audio book guy. Nice. And so I'm just book to book to book to book. At night, I study geopolitics. Okay. So I watch reenactments of World War I or documentaries or okay. I'll watch YouTube channels that I find are very good. There's this channel I like called Useful Charts. Okay. That does a bunch of like chronological history stuff, talks about the Ottoman Empire, oh, colonization, nice. things like that. I, I always try to stay up to date on all the history of NATO and, you know, okay. every war and the reason. So you're a history guy too. Yeah, yeah. because I, I do believe that it repeats itself. Yeah. And then it, it's definitely in our face. And I think for us to get a full understanding of why things are happening today, we have to understand the past. Yeah. You know, we have to understand that the beef or the war that you see today. It's not just about today. Yes. It was about something that happened in the 80s or 30 years ago. And, right. And what would it look like if we had another Cold War? What would World War III look like? What yeah. would pop that off? Yep. How, do, how does the, the effect of one country getting into it with another country along with their allies all of a sudden getting involved, how does that start to snowball yeah. into something that we can't come back from in, in regards right. to a war? And, and just how to look out for those things. And I, I feel like studying geopolitics and history in that particular regard helps you understand not only what might happen, but how it'll affect the financial climate. Maybe America. you'll be a president. I don't think so. I, I think I've- You're tall enough. The biggest predictor of who becomes president is which candidate's taller. You think crazy. I'm joking. There's only one time in the last like 50 years that the shorter guy wins. Wow. So if I was a Democratic advisor or a Republican advisor, I'd be like, yo, 
bring me bring me Shaquille O'Neal. We're gonna right. wipe up this thing. I don't know why nobody's yeah. deployed a seven footer because I don't know if you saw when Bloomberg ran. Trump's big guy, you yeah. know. Bloomberg's like five six. Yeah, Trump's my size. Yeah, yeah. Bloomberg, you right away. It's people. You could be Secretary of State like Dick Cheney. They're all normal size, but people like their leader in America. We like tall leaders. Other Putin's short. Putin's short. Putin's like five six. But Putin got a little, he got that, he does jujitsu, sambo, he's got that swag to him. Now, let's switch gears for a second. So we have politics, which we can affect a little bit. You can vote, you can talk, but we know that, as the great philosopher said, let every man sweep his own front porch and the whole world will be clean. So for somebody who follows you, you got a lot of people following you, especially you know, a demographic, let's just say 18 to 30 year old guys. They need to make money. Okay. What are the money making opportunities that you think are right in front of people's nose and they're not doing it? The trades. I think in five to 10 years, there's gonna be YouTubers coming online and saying, you want to know the new hack to make a bunch of money, start a plumbing business. Okay. Think about this. When all the world's like, it used to be that the most talented people would go start businesses and, and they would start them in all these different fields, right? Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of the talent is going into wanting to be an influencer. I think there's a statistic out there that says that all of, if high school ch kids vote, right. their number one thing they want to be is an influencer. Yes, an influencer. Yeah. Right. Number one. Yes. Not a plumber. Plumber's number one. Not a plumber. 100,304. Right. <laughs> it's in not fact, high. I can even vouch for this. I remember times where I'd been on dates with women and they asked me what I did. Yeah. And I told them I, I hang steel buildings all over America, you yeah. know, and in their mind, they dated a tech guy, let's say last week. Yeah. And I make substantially more money than that individual, yes. but there's nothing sexy about hanging steel. Yeah. So I believe that the, especially MEP type companies, mechanical, electrical plumbing. Yeah. Those businesses people are going to need. And yep. if you watch over time, just for a house call, because I have so many rental properties, I'll watch a bill that used to be $500 a few years ago go to $1,500 just to put coolant in a unit yes. for one of, one of my rental properties. I'm telling you now, there's going to be this paradigm shift where men that work with their hands yes. are going to get paid in a way that I think is actually more in line with what they deserve. Yeah. The working man builds and maintains a society. Yeah. None of us can live the life we live without them. Yep. And I think that's one thing that we majorly miss in society. And if I ever were a person that had any kind of political power, especially in regards to the way the law works, I would want to take a reassessment of everything that's done in society yep. and put the people that build our roads yep. and the bridges and do the electrical way higher at the top, substantially higher than an OnlyFans girl, just for a <laughs> frame of reference. Which is more important for society. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's like the, there's an old proverb in the Bible. It says, do not despise humble beginnings. Do not despise humble occupations. Like you said, you're out on a date with a girl. She's like, what do you do? You're like, construction, steel. And she's thinking, eh. Yeah. If you had said, oh, I'm an actor. You know what's yeah. funny? It's 2,000 years ago, even 1,000 years ago, being an actor was literally considered... Like no woman wanted to marry an actor. It was like the low, even the 1800s. It's only since the invention of Hollywood where we're standing. So, I mean, even things that we now, like society's flipped, man. You used to be, in American history, it was the intellectual gentleman farmer. That was the most respected founding fathers were. So, Joel Salatin, my first mentor, who is one of the most famous farmers in the world, man, same with him. He's like, if you tell, if a man tells a woman he's a farmer, the modern world, women will be like, uh, but now after 2020, people go, oh, the people who feed the planet, maybe they should be in the highest to oh, see. Wow, absolutely. And people who twerk should be a little bit lower. A little bit lower. A little on bit the scale. lower on this. I'll, give you, you, I'll, I'll give you some more, man. Teachers. Yeah. Now, I don't agree with our curriculums at right. all. But I do believe that those men and women are doing their best to help society in the best way they can. Yeah. So I think teachers, cops. Yeah. Um, 
obviously doctors are already so well you're paid. not you're not pro defund the cops i am absolutely not pro yeah. defund the cops and it's funny it's funny you ask that because even the people that are defunding that are about defunding the cops would quickly return on their opinion of the situation if somebody was trying to rob their house yeah in la yeah the defund politicians when 2020 came they hired off-duty cops to protect their house Right. The ultimate hypocrisy. That Nobody likes hypocrisy. a cop till you need to call a hop. cop. Hi, per- hi, per- <laughs> yeah. It, you know what, man? And that's one thing I can't stand is hypocrisy. Yeah. I can't stand it. Like, you know, people, they, they, they'll say one thing and then when the rubber hits the road, like violence. Yeah. Now where are the cops? Yep. Now where are the cops to do their job? Or they're complaining about how long it takes them to get there. I just, it, it's a lose-lose situation to be a cop, it seems, these days. Yeah, I think that. One of the things, I'm not a communist at all, but Karl Marx was obviously a powerful thinker, even if he was wrong. One of the things that he did say that was true, because even somebody who has crazy ideas is right once in a while. He said the problem with capitalism, it will create so much wealth that people will have so much free time and they'll basically end up kind of insane. And you look at society and when you can't figure something out, you're like, this country's too wealthy. America has the opposite problem. People have too much free time. And so when you get, like, if we were in a depression, there'd be no OnlyFans. Because guys would be like, I got to spend every dollar to eat. Now, some people have too much money. I don't even know how OnlyFans exist because there's free porn. And dudes are like, no, I'd rather pay. But you know what's interesting about that? (laughs) Too much money. Carl, you were right about OnlyFans. If you're in your grave, Karl Marx was right. Did Marxism you know that? Marxism and OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, Mark, Karl Marx. I wonder if he would have had an OnlyFans. But you know the re- you, you know why you know why I think those guys would they they cut other things. The difference between a guy that watches porn and a guy that has an OnlyFans account is that I, I guess I've learned this from meeting enough OnlyFans girls. Yeah, it's the feeling of a relationship that yes. they don't have. Yes, it's filling in that void of feeling somebody cares about them. Yes, and I think. That's why OnlyFans does so well. Even, yeah, even it's the individual. Now. And they want to believe that the girl is actually texting them back when it's really just a typer. Yeah. It's a really sad situation. Yeah, when it's and, a dude. Yeah, it is a, probably a dude. Probably it's absolutely a dude. probably a guy. I know plenty of girls. They have whole typing teams. Yeah. You know, I, was, I was with a girl recently, huge following, like 5 million followers on Instagram. Yeah. Makes crazy money on OnlyFans. Yep. And I just got to ask her everything about the business. And yes. it is a legitimate business. I'll first, I'll first say that. But then secondly, these poor guys are talking to typers yeah. just in hopes, blind hope. Yep. They want to believe it's her. Even if deep down in, this, in their soul they know it's not, they want to believe it. Well, we said earlier, all the money doesn't it. matter in the war if there's no women. So That's men it. are like, I, 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 when OnlyFans first started, I never heard of OnlyFans. I was in La Jolla. Met a girl, I don't know, Tinder or something, Instagram, she DM'd me. Curviest girl, white girl probably on the planet. Good curves, not BBL curves, Adrian. Not These good. were God-given. So anyway, Come we on, met Adrian. We met up. He's a, he's a curve. He's a curve man. That's curve man over <laughs> I'm there. I'm a curve man myself. Yeah. But, okay. Just have a small waist. Yeah. Yeah, she has a small waist. Anyway, yeah. I went on just quick date. We're talking. And she's like, yeah, I make, I'm on this one website. And I was like, you making any money that? She's like, I make a hundred grand, 80 to a hundred grand a month. And I was like, man. And then she kept talking and I was like, you know, what's up? And she's like, yeah, my Navy SEAL husband is out of town right now. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to end this date real quick Yeah. because of all the women you don't want to go on a date with, it's one whose Navy SEAL jealous husband is deployed. I consider myself, I've been doing jujitsu a lot. I can hold my own, but you don't mess with a Navy SEAL. So I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom. I care. I don't think I ever came back. So if you're out there, I hope you're making a lot of money. Husband, I didn't know. So yeah, it, put your it, gun away. That's another crazy thing. I actually have three rules around that. Okay. So. Here are my three rules when it comes to women, my rules in regards to what you're actually talking about. So number one, if you ever dated my friend in any capacity, right. I will never sleep with you. Okay. Ever. If you have a boyfriend or a husband that is fighting for my freedom. Right. Absolutely not. Ever. Right. I don't care if he's my worst enemy, ran over my dog. Don't care. Yeah. Rule number three, 
I will sleep with your sister. Sorry. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. And I'll tell you why. It might piss you off, but it won't break your heart. You, because, you, because you told it to them ahead of time? Yeah. So they're hey, not, heads they're up, not bro. Don't bring your sister around me, you know? <laughs> I'll leave your sister out of this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I like that. So uh, I want to go back to the trades for a second because so you made your money with building steel. Steel's your thing, right? That's right. Yeah. So you're coming in and framing up commercial buildings? Yeah. So think of uh, an Amazon building okay. or when you're on the runway and you see an airplane hangar that the planes are going into. Yeah. Amazon's, Costco's, Rooms to Go, Target, Walmart, yeah. any, any big box store you'd go into. That's what we do. So you got your own company doing that. You focused yep. in the South mostly? No, we go coast to coast. I got guys in California right now. In California, New so York. So how quick did you grow that business? I don't know if you share your numbers, but when yeah, did you so, start it? So I started it at 24. Okay. We started doing backyard buildings, sheds, not much bigger than this garage, I'd say. Yeah. And then I quickly realized that I needed to get in commercial. Yep. And so we grew and grew and grew and I finally got into the seven figures and then we got to the multi seven figures. I tried to scale a couple times, got punched in the mouth. Yep. Systems weren't right. I maybe hiring the wrong people, but I, I took full responsibility for that. I got down a million dollars one time. It was one of the toughest, toughest times in my life because Could I, you sleep or no, did it keep you up at night? No, man. My whole identity was gone. I was like the Dookie Hauser metal buildings. Huh. My whole identity. I was the youngest board member on the Metal Building Contractors Directors Association. I, I was supposed to be successful. I'd won a lot of work in a short period of time. And I, I had to scale up very quickly. And the scaling didn't go as well as I wanted to. The project management didn't go as well as I wanted to. So you basically underbid. It's not that I underbid. It's that having to ramp up the manpower that quickly. Yeah. With new talent, like new crews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to know that they're co as competent as they say they are. Yep. Which ended up being my biggest downfall in that situation, yeah. which led to what, what is now our greatest talent is the way that I find people and the okay. way that we take them through the hiring process and like weed out the guys that are going to be good versus the ones that are going to be bad. Yeah. But it took me going through that to, to get to the place that I'm in now. Yeah, so, you got to always say there's two mistakes people make when making money. Most people going too slow but also going too fast. They're both deadly. Yep. You know, it's like driving a car. It's like you're trying to get somewhere. Ah, you can go too slow yeah. and you're eight hours late. But if you drive too fast, you're smashing into a wall and you die. You never even get there. So it's funny how balance Buddha was right. It's the middle way. So for you, so you got a little too fast to growth. And then what's the plan there? Are you going to take this business and exit it? Is it cash flow business? Like what's the right now? It's a cash cow. Like right. it, it's just a money machine, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. We changed the model about four years ago. Okay. The way we structure the contracts, the way we find it, the, and train the men, everything about the business uh, was restructured. And yeah. Since then it's ran very efficiently, very low overhead, very high cash flow. But that said, I think it's people dependent in an yeah. area or two. So our newest goal this year, we set up quarterly rocks, we call them, we, we run EOS. Yep. yep. And so our goal this year is to create some structure around some of those, those pillars that have too much weight on them as far as talent goes. Yeah. There's individuals and they know this, we know this, we're all, you know, something we talk about, somebody I trained. And so we're building around that person to uh, basically ensure that she does not get golden handcuffs put on her in an exit. Yeah. Because she's coming with me. Ah, and so, so you make it so you could sell the business and take some of your best people. I want to take just one, okay, particularly. And is and that then, your CEO, COO? Yeah, she runs yeah. the place. Yeah, that's good. You have women. I always tell people, man, women don't are sleep loyal. Women. Yeah. yeah, don't say, but, but but women are loyal at the top of your business. Don't sleep on them, is what I said. Oh, I thought you said yeah. don't sleep with. Them. I'm like, no, that's no, no, also no. a good thing. Uh, don't sleep, sleep with people. Sleep as many as you. you want, as long as they don't, you don't sign their check. Yeah, but don't sleep on women when it comes to business. For sure, you get a strong woman yeah. in a good role. I look at them as Trojan horses. Yeah, they can cur. I, she particularly, she can cuss one of my guys up and down, and they'll be like, "Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry." Right. Whereas if I had to do it, right, you have this natural thing Aggression. where it's like I have to show you that. I'm more dominant than you, which yeah. I don't personally need for my ego. Yeah. I don't want to fire the guy. I just want him to tie off on the fucking roof. Yeah. You know, whereas if I say it, there, there is this, there's this push and pull of, 
you know, supremacy. Yeah. Whereas she can say it twice as bad as I ever said it. Yeah. And he'll be like, yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. Yeah. Women are, yeah. It, it, what it allows to do is like the ego goes down, it twists down and hearing comes up. Yeah. When it comes from a woman or not from a man particularly, it, it's not about ego anymore. It's about rationality. Yeah. And I think that she's been really good about doing that. And so is the other women that work in the company. Three women run the whole place. Yeah. My second mentor, Al Nation, he's like, Ty, once you got a business model that's working, he's like, women nurture a business. They're, they nurture. As it is nurture. They take care of it and they don't steal your ideas as much. Right. Now, there are business. things I like that I find men in general are better for. There's always exceptions, but it goes two ways. You know, it's two ways. Let me ask you this. So, I'm a big believer in social circle. You want to make more money? That's the old saying people say. I don't think it's exactly true, but it's kind of true. You're the average net worth of the five people you spend the most time with. What have you done with your social circle that you've seen within the same year, like income skyrocketed? What'd you do? What's your social strategy, your network? We kind of talked about it yesterday, but I think it's very important not to forget that networking with somebody in person yes. is far more powerful yeah. than trying to network or create rapport with them over a phone. For sure. And I think people forget that. It's like I drove, I drove, I flew from Romania to be with yeah. you here today. Yeah. And it was on short note, like boom, yeah. boom, get it done. But people, particularly I think in 2024, particularly after they've had a cell phone in their hand for a very long time, yep. they forget that having a real connection, being able to look a guy in the eyes yes. and get those like subconscious, like micro yeah. expressions, all those things that really matter yeah. to create trust and a bond with somebody is more powerful than anything you could ever do online, liking somebody's post, commenting on it, yeah. tweeting, retweeting, all those things. So for me, if I can meet you in person, I am so confident yeah. that we can build some kind of rapport in person yeah. that you will like me more than you liked me before we met. Yeah. That's what I'm looking to do. I was talking to Hermosi. Hermosi um, has that new thing, school, and yeah. we were in his top 10. Yep. And he messaged me on Instagram after, and he said, you know, you are not what I expected you to be. Huh. And I think the only way that could have happened if I, was for me to fly to Vegas right. and show up and like, let him see who I am, yeah. which by the way, he's amazing. Yeah. But I mean, we all like her Mosey. He's easy to like yeah. me based off my content and the way, how it gets clipped up, where, where it gets clipped up, what I might've said that offended somebody not as easy to like as her Mosey. Yeah. So for me, I'm just counting on the fact that if I show up and meet you in person, the worst case scenario, you get to see exactly who I am and I'm betting on that to win. Yeah. So, so you've got your social circle. You're in Romania with them. You're, you, so you go wherever you got to go. I'll go wherever I have to go. Yeah. And I, I just look at it as part of what I need to do. How did you do that? So for somebody watching, you've been able to network with some of the top people in the world. What was their strategy at first when they didn't know you? I was going to the same events that we throw now. Okay. I was going to masterminds. I was in Tony Robbins Platinum Group for a while. Oh, you were? Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I did that. I wasn't as involved. Uh, I, I struggled a little bit with that group just because I'm not, it felt like church camp a bit. Right. Sometimes and nothing against Tony. I think he's yeah. great, but I just wasn't looking to put glow sticks on and jump up and down a whole lot. It's yeah. Something that just, I, I can't like bring myself to do. Yeah. yeah. Never been good. He's that. like a more emotional. Yeah. I've been, I love Tony Robbins. I like his books. I've been to some of yeah. his, I remember going to a conference with my friend in LA and everyone was jumping around hugging and me and him were like, we got to get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> We're not as huggy. Yeah. It well, like, I, I'm it was not... like, turn to your right and hug somebody next to you. And me and my, my friend, Armand were like, all right, this was a good conference. Ooh, we'll, we'll read the books. I hug people all the time, especially yeah. people that stop me in public, you know, like for a photo and stuff. I, I yeah. But like... this was like long, meaningful hugs with dudes. I don't know. Exactly. Well, it's the forced hug. Yeah, it was a long, yeah. meaningful. I can give you a, you know, a quick pat around. Yeah, like a, like a bro. Hug. All my Australian, all the Australians I know in LA, they're like, you know, we like you, Ty. Like when you met us, you shook our hand. And they're like, we live in LA. All these dudes want to hug us. You know, Australians really? are like macho. They're like, yeah, we're not yeah. into that, man. They're like, we like you. Yeah. So, top G, Andrew Tate. How'd you meet him? I joined the war room. Oh, okay. So you met through. I joined his the war room. He has a mastermind. Yeah. Yes. So the war room. <laughs> Best network in the world, man. Yeah. I could go in the war room right now and say, I need a place to stay for the next year. 
yeah. America's going to war. 70 countries would message me back. Huh. Automatic. It, it's, it's a great group. So I joined it, flew out to Vegas. They, they did a, what they call a summit. It's a big event. Met Andrew and Tristan. Yeah. And what we, year was that? 1920. Uh, 2020, you mean? Yeah, like... Oh, 19 or 20. 19 or okay. 20, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And um, you know how it is. It's like you meet somebody and you know that you click with them almost immediately. Right. So I, I knew pretty quickly and they knew pretty quickly. And from there, it was just... We've been hanging out ever so since. So what's the number one thing you learned from them? Because they've blown up. They're massive. A, they're controversial. They, they, what What something that people don't realize that you were able to learn by being with them in person? There's many things I've learned from the boys. I believe that their true expression and living brotherhood, the way that they do every day, is probably one of the most powerful things I've ever seen. The way that they work together mm. and talk to one another and move with speed and make things happen and ultimately know that no matter what comes from the outside world, that they have each other and that bond together which in my opinion makes them substantially stronger than your average man walking the streets hmm. alone. Right. Because most men are very isolated yeah. in 2024. And so keeping that close to your chest and keeping that family in tight and, and allowing new people to come in, but keeping that core group, the core group, yeah. is something that I think they do in a very beautiful, efficient way. Yeah. There's the obvious things I've learned from Andrew and Tristan about marketing yeah. You know, uh, me and Tristan talk a lot about history and geopolitics. It, Tristan, honestly, is probably the most underrated man on the planet, in mm. my opinion. Okay. And, he, and I only say that not it, because it's because Andrew's there. Right. Andrew gets credit for how great he is. Right. In, in so many ways. Whereas if it were just Tristan yeah. and Tristan had the, you know, if he were the one speaking as much as Andrew, you would find that he is just as impressive. Yeah. You know, he could talk history for hours, name the dates, name the generals. So that's something I really, really enjoy doing with Tristan. We'll stay up like late at night, smoking cigars, drinking whiskey, country music, but with maps, right? Ottoman empire, Rome. Yeah. And, and then this happened and this, and you have to understand that this is how, you know, the whole Palestine thing got kicked off after world war one and Britain and they right. gave him the land and, he just really, really has this deep passion for history and, and cars and just things that, things that are very interesting to know and help you understand the world better. But what they've really taught me the most is with true brotherhood, you can have true trust. And if you have true trust, you can have speed. And yeah. speed really matters in business. Yeah. And, and they certainly uh, do an incredible job of doing that. But from the basis of the fact that they all are – Tightly knitting together. Yeah, Sam Altman, the founder of ChatGBT, might become one of the richest people in history. He said he's never met someone successful that didn't go fast. No. Now, it's possible to go too fast, but most people are too slow. Very few people I meet, there's, there's a 2% of the world goes too fast, 98%. Well, 90% doesn't even start, <laughs> and the rest go too slow. 2% go too fast. And then there's this little one millionth 1% 1 yeah. that have that perfect timing. Yeah. Who else is underrated in the world? What do you think creates a scenario for someone to be over underrated? Maybe they, I would say they're not good at social media. So they're smart, but they're not as viral as people who have worse ideas. Could be a leader, be someone soft-spoken. Could also be somebody who gets a lot of hate but if you actually met them, you'd be like, this person's smart. You know what right. I mean? So who's underrated like that, that you've met? You know, it's hard to say. I, I don't have anybody in mind other than T. Yeah. Everybody else has kind of been so in So he's mind. the most underrated guy you've ever met? I think so. Maybe I'm a little biased. Yeah. You know, I'm, cert I'm certainly well, close to Well, nobody's met everybody. Yeah. I wonder sometimes... If I think there's were, been some people overrated. Yeah, who's overrated? I would never say. <laughs> we can I talk would about never it say. off camera. Yeah, I would never say. But um, what about dead people that are overrated? That's not so bad. Dead people that yeah, are overrated. Like Ronald Reagan, Einstein, actors. I would say. I always thought, in terms of being overrated. Well, I think underrated Sigmund Freud. 
You know, he's the most, I think he's the most underrated human in history. But underrated. Underrated. Because people think Sigmund Freud is wrong because he had a few theories. I mean, he invented psychology in the 1800s. So yes, if you invented a branch of science in the 1800s before there's microscopes and DNA, you know, of course you're gonna be wrong, but he was right about so many things without having computers, without having modern biology, without having CT scans, fMRI machines, CAT scan, you know, all the things we have. So yeah, Einstein, I would say Einstein is probably rated where he should be, but Freud, I, there was a debate between Freud and Einstein. You read that, it's like Freud was twice as smart as Einstein, at least in the that letters? debate. The letters. Yeah. Between whether World War II would happen. And Einstein said basically he had his optimistic thing. This is in the 1930s. Talk about a miscalculation. He's like, I think it's going to work out great. And Freud is like, we are headed for something. It was like a child talking to, I mean, an adult talking to a child. What do you think Freud would say right now? If Freud was alive now, Sigmund Freud, he would say, I told you, <laughs> everything is sex. What dominates the world right now in terms of what social media domination? People twerking, dancing, right. good looking people, all this sexy ideas. So not just sexy, also human sexuality, but what's the most, the biggest arguments among society, male, female ones. He's like, right. I told you, I told you, I told you. AI, he was like, I told you, there's an unconscious mind. And if you could tap into it, you would rule the world. That's AI, has no, it's just the unconscious turned into action. So I think, I read one of the best sci uh, brain neurologists now said, you know what? He was probably right that we have a triune brain, three-part brain, which you can simplify and say, you know, you have the conscious mind, subconscious and unconscious. And most things happen on the unconscious, but also that we have the ego, which is our way of coping with all the tough stuff in the world. We're like, well, we're this, that, we're awesome. We're then you have the superego, which is civilization telling us what to do. When you were talking earlier right. about saying, I'm gonna have eight wives, society is the superego saying that's wrong. And then you have your ego that's like, no, I think the way I should cope with the world is to have more than one wife or woman to ha and more children spread among. And then the unconscious is our primitive instincts, which is what you're kind of tapping into right. and saying, well, I'm built to spread my seed and keep yeah. my probabilities going. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> you know, I, I, I do take the smoke quite well. So fine, fair enough. But you know, in my mind, I, I believe that most of us are a lot alike. And our biases come from what we're capable of actually pulling off. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So you're yeah, saying a you guy ever, will say he doesn't want this just because he can't do it. And you can. Yeah. I, I also would say that a overweight girl with purple hair will say she don't need no man. Right. But. You're saying because she has a hard time yeah, getting so one. Yeah, so they want to self-validate themselves in some way. Yes. You know, so, and I'm sure that I have these biases as yeah. well. They're probably blind spots to me. I'm not saying that. Yeah. But I think by and largely people operate that way to make themselves feel better. That's the ego. That's what yeah. Freud's saying. Yeah. When you have the ego, you want to protect yourself. So right. if you're an ugly man or an ugly woman, you say love's not important. That's yeah. also called, Charlie Munger called that the delusion cognitive bias. So we delude ourselves and say, well, it's the same with money. People have never had money. We'll say, oh, you don't need money. Money doesn't help at all. But that's not true. Because once you have money, you're like, oh, no, no. This is because I've been rich and I've been poor. Better to be rich. But it's not everything. But people cope with it through ego delusion by saying, Meh, I'm okay living paycheck to paycheck. And they also go as far as to cope with you through the same mechanism. So, yes. for example, if I walk, let's say they see me on a podcast and we're yes. talking about how to make money. Yes. They're like, oh, that guy's an asshole. He's a douchebag. Yes. Yeah, right. If you met me in person, you quickly find out, no, I'm not. Yeah, but it makes you feel better exactly to act as if because I talk about something that I'm very passionate about, by the way, yeah. that I must somehow be shallow. I must somehow be insecure. Yes. I must somehow not, you know, 
enjoy quality time with people I love. Yes. I'm a some now not believe in family. Bullshit. Right. I just like making money. It's a game. It's something yes. I like. I can stay up all night talking to you about how to make money. Yeah. It's fun to me. I enjoy it. And I'm also not blinded to the fact that once you're able to acquire it, your life is substantially better. Yeah. Do I think I'm better than you? No, I don't. Yeah. But do I enjoy the game and making it and creating a life that has freedom in it and for the people I love as well? I absolutely do. If you need me to be a bad person to feel better about yourself, right. go ahead. Yep. Go ahead. You know what brings out that in men more than anything? Lamborghini. You drive up to a Lamborghini with a Lamborghini to a crowd, you're going to have 20% of dudes go... Small dick. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, that's 80%. You're going to have 20% have the proper reaction. What is that guy doing that I could learn from? That's like the pursuit of happiness, Will oh, Smith. Oh, man. What are you doing? To be, that's the best, but 80% cope with it because it's an easier way out. Eh, that guy probably inherited money. That guy's coping. That's it. Versus saying, that's a beautiful car, just like you like your iPhone. That's a beautiful work of art. You don't shame people for having an right. overpriced iPhone. Well, let people have an overpriced car Some. As long as that car doesn't become my idol. It's not my idol. At one point when I lived in this house, I had Ferraris and other stuff. And for a year, I sold all my cars. And I said, I'm going to walk or take a Uber just to stay humble enough. Then I got them back again. I've deeply thought about doing that. It's a good idea. Every once in a while, cleanse yeah. yourself from material. That's why I have a farm. I go to my farm. I got trucks, tractors, horses. Right? And that's why I tell men... And, and I would say this for you, like now you've made it, get a place in the countryside to balance out the ego and it'll make you more powerful. Yeah. I love that. It idea. makes you powerful. I'll tell you another thing I really want to do is do a couple of years of RV. Yeah. I'd really love that. That means probably freedom is your top. I'm, oh, I already told you it's, it's definitely freedom. Freedom, it's mating, freedom. is like, they're probably on a one to a hundred scale. It's probably like 98, 99. Yeah, call it F squared. Just freedom and fucking. There you go. Oh, bam. <laughs> <laughs> you have this Lamborghini. I'm going to have to change the four M's to the two F's. Yeah. The two F's. Freedom and Justin's fucking. two F's. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that, man. I don't Get your know cardio could, in. I don't know if we could end on a better note yeah. than that. My man, bro, thanks for coming on. Bro. That was amazing. <laughs> the double F's.